I'm going to take it back to one of those teams that I was talking about. That's was kind of fringe playoff making the, you know, making it in there, but leaking oil kind of coming in. Um, and it, it wasn't too bad. I've been in the top, you know, four for most of the season as, as far as points go, just had some unfortunate luck. Um, but, you know, kind of as we're coming in uh, to the playoffs here, we'll, we'll do a little trade journal talk. You know, I'm making a playoffs in the league here. Uh, I got a pretty decent team. I definitely can cash in said league. Um, I've I have cashed over the last five years. I've I've been in the top four pretty much every year or f- last four years been in the top four every year. I've, I've gotten a first, a second, a third. You know, so I'm, I've been near the top, but, I, you know, I had Dalvin and Zeke in that league. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, we're in a little bit of a transitional phase here, but still have a pretty good roster. Um, so, but like I said, the last few weeks, we've been kind of leaking some oil, losing players. Uh, it's a three flex league, start two wide receivers, two running backs, and then three flexes. Um, so I'm losing Kristen Kirk coming in, which is my main my main loss here. Um, and he's mm-hmm. been my third flex all, all season. So. Strong third flex there. No doubt. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I guess I, I also have Mostert, who you could consider also my third flex, but I've been, you know, flexing those two all year. Um, and and Mostert's been, you know, obviously really good, but, yeah. um, you know, he's got a little bit of a history, history of injuries that could strike at any point. Um, yeah. And now we got A-Chain kind of coming back in the fold. So I kind of wanted to find something to bolster up my last flex. And, and you know, some people will say suboptimal to trade at this point um, yeah. to, to try to balance out your losses and, and try to make a playoff push. I, I, you know, it can be, but I, you know, it can go either way. I, in my opinion, mm-hmm. um, I'm sure you can find data that supports your suboptimal opinion. I'm sure I can find data that supports my, Hey, if you can find the right trade, you know, pull it off. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and then, you know, I also have, uh, George Pickens, who's also been in the mix for my last flex here and there or bye weeks and stuff. But, you know, you lose Kenny Pickett. You don't know how long he's going to be. Um, and and Pickens has been kind of up and down all year. Right. Um, so, you know, he was he's kind of my only piece that I, that I have available to deal. Um, you know, the rest of my lineup that's below those guys are all kind of like guys that you don't really want. You know, I got like a Michael Gallup and a Darnell Mooney and right. uh, McLaughlin and, you know, Hunter Henry. It's tight end premium um, and, and uh, Conklin, you know, guys that I could start in a pinch, especially Conklin and Henry. But you, you don't yeah. really want to. Right. Um, you know, so I'm trying to trying to bolster that up there, uh, get something a little more concrete than than Kenny Pickett or uh, George Pickens, you know, Pickens, as my yeah. as my depth piece, basically. So right. I've had him on the block really hasn't had a whole lot of interest. Um, but, you know, I figured maybe I could use him as a piece to, to, to do something else. But, you know, I don't have a things a lot of things of value there uh, that I can really put in my lineup. Uh, but I do have an extra first and plus Pickens. So mm. and I like Pickens. I'm not really necessarily trying to get rid of him. But, you know, in this position, if I could find something that makes sense, I, I would I would do so where the jury's still a little out on Pickens. You're either in or you're out. And, you know, some somebody in the league told me that they only had they would only give me a third for him, basically straight <laughs> up. And I'm like, that's a bit crazy. But sure, yeah. you know, is what it is. You know, so uh, the the first thing I did was you go down to the bottom six teams, you, you look around, you say, which guys do I have a relationship with? Which guys can I trade for? And you start the dialogue with those guys. You see what they have. But it also in doing so, even though, you know, three of the other guys that are in this bottom maybe aren't guys that I would normally be able to do something with because they're just not the most active player that, you know, they 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 set their lineup and they come for the draft, but they don't trade a ton and they don't yeah. really respond to your offers a lot. I usually send a DM along with, you know, guys who don't respond. I usually send a DM along to kind of give them two points of contact, of you know, and I'll usually – delay the dm i'll give it a little while and then send the dm sometimes i'll even pull down the trade and resend the trade and another dm just to try to keep pinging them a little bit right um but so you know my first move was to go find guys that that they had that you know maybe they were like hey i could get rid of that guy Um, is this is this on sleeper yeah do you guys use the do, do you use the trade block we we do, but it doesn't ever. There's always guys up there, but it doesn't matter. Like yeah. Pickens has been on my trade block all year. Nobody, I uh, mean, you know, Big Co's the only person that's inquired. Um, yeah. Well, when you, I guess what I'm saying is, when you're looking to start thinking about doing a trade, do you look at the trade block at all, or do you not use it? I'll I'll scroll through because it's at the top, you know. So I, I'll yeah. I'll scroll through it real quick. But for the most part, the you know the in, the the inactive teams don't use it anyway. Uh, right. So um, the ones that should use it don't. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
so you know I, I went after i've been going after josh jacobs for most of the year there for an inactive team no, no, you know no no response really but then you know so i sent that first for guys like you know michael Pittman um on on teams that were going to miss the playoffs guys who were you know maybe a little bit have played great all year right i like but maybe maybe there's some people who don't love love them so maybe you know i know maybe a first isn't going to get it done for picking or for uh pitman but get the conversation right. uh kind of rolling i sent you know a, a first for trey mcbride it's tight end premium you know see if i can get the conversation rolling it didn't didn't, didn't really no, no real success there you know i sent uh a first for stefan diggs uh you know didn't get didn't get any any traction there he said he thought diggs was going to be at least I had him to be able to text. Um, you know, he said he thought Diggs was going to have four more years of elite production. So wow. I'm like, uh, you know, sure. Wow. Hey, yeah, I'm not going to argue with you. I mean, yeah. so then I sent him, I sent Did him. Did you ask him to change his name though? Yeah. Last half, last half full. Like, yeah. 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 So, so then I sent him Diggs and Pickens just to see if I could, you know, the first and Pickens to see if I could sway him and get, you know, see if I can get something rolling. Cause I'll take the, the wide receiver six going into this. Sure. And, yeah. and the first that I acquired during the draft to, to see if I can make that happen. Didn't happen. Um, I, I, I inquired about Tyreek Hill on a team, um, sent, sent a first and, and Pickens on there to see if I get the ball rolling, you know, nothing. Um, so that kind of brings me to where we are finding the guys that I know I've had rapport with. I know we'll trade. They're not scared to win or lose a deal. Um, you know, so one of those being big co, yeah. um, so, you know, I start perusing rosters. Like I said, I know there's, there's two guys I can get a dialogue rolling with. I've made plenty of deals in the past. Um, so that's part of this whole fantasy thing is kind of knowing who and what and where, unfortunately, two of the other guys in the league who I would normally deal with are, are in the top six. So they don't want to trade anybody right now. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, which is kind of unfortunate, but. Um, so that's where I focus most of my time, sending to the other jabronis um, who probably aren't going to respond. Like I said, I just throw out those blanket first to see if I can get something rolling. And right. if I don't, it's whatever. I start going down the list of guys who who these people have. And the one roster has Flowers and Wilson and DK and Waddle. Um, oh, so I, okay. I start avail seeing who's available. You know, I send George Pickens for, for Zay Flowers just to see if I can get, you know, something rolling. I send... Right. Um, you know, a first for Waddle to see if I can get something rolling. So he comes back and says he needs more for Waddle. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, I, Waddle would be a good ad in here. It's, it's not going to kill me in the long run. Um, it, it, it's shorter. Um, oop, got a little little baby cry in action. Um, but, you know, not, not going to kill me in the long run, you know, uh, and and is, is a good short-term asset as well. So um, you, you add him in there and he says he needs a little more so i'm like all right well, well what's a little more well while that's happening um you know he's he deals waddle for a one and two twos oh um oh, brutal. which is which is always a bummer yeah. um and he says well you know i don't really want to get rid of zay and i don't really want to get rid of garrett wilson and i said you know understandable you're a rebuilding team you, you got a pretty good team you, you had some bad luck you, you you got some picks for next year cool uh, so right. what about DK? And I, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily love DK, uh, but if the price is right, I'll, I'll deal him. So, you know, I'm like, all right, sure. you know, what about a first for DK? As he's, he's in the Eastern league with us. Um, I've tried to get a first for that league cause it's auction dollars and nobody will give me a first for DK. So I'm like, look, nobody will give me a first in this other league that we're in, but maybe in this league, I would give you a first cause I'm competing for a playoff thing. And he, so he sends me back a first Kyron Williams and two twos for DK Metcalf. And I'm like, buddy, I just, I just told, and he's one of these guys who just, he, it'll be this crazy high price tag. And then you'll see in a second that it goes for nowhere near that price tag. Hmm. So as I'm doing this, I'm look, I'm starting to go through my points of, of who, uh, you know, who, who I would want here. So I go start looking at points, comparing, can I get somebody with comparable points to DK Metcalf and not end up giving one of these firsts away? So I still have first, maybe I can give away Pickens in a two or just Pickens and, and acquire somebody. Right. I start digging around and, and Cole Komet is tight end seven and this is tight end premium 1.5. So after this week, uh, Cole Komet has 176.5 points and DK Metcalf has 179.5.4 points. So pretty, pretty close in pretty points. Close. Yeah. Um, and coming into the week, they were around the same um, splits. So, I'm, so I start being like, all right, well, maybe I can pay half the price that I'm paying for DK for Cole Komet. Right. Um, and this guy's already told me how he doesn't value. Um, <laughs> there goes that toy again. How he doesn't value uh, Pickens. So I'm not going to get any value on the DK side with the Pickens trade. Um, but right. I know the other guy does have some value on Pickens. So I float Pickens out there for Komet um, and see if I can get a, you know, 
can I get commit and a two for Pickens? Right. Um, and you know, you play for the one, one, he's got a pretty good team. There's a chance that that's a top, you know, two, one to two, four pick here. Mm-hmm. Cause he, he's got a, he's got a pretty good team. That's just going to miss. He's got Tyreek on that team, which he didn't want to sell. Cause he needs him for the, you know, overall winning of, of, of the first there. So, right. Basically the, the point of my rant here is, you know, when you're going to look for these deals in tight end premium, especially, I know some people will poo poo that if it's not this top guy that, you know, that there's no value in the tight end. Well, that's, it's bullshit. Cause yeah, while paying for DK Metcalf and paying double for basically what I would have to maybe pay for him as at least what the guy is telling me what he's what he's worth. So I tell him I don't want Kyron. So he sends me back basically the same deal that Waddle just got dealt for a, a first right. and two twos without Kyron. Because I'm like, why would I trade you Kyron? I'm trying to bolster up for the playoffs. So I'm like, all right, well, I kind of know the price for DK. If that's the price, you know, if maybe I can get this commit deal done and figure out a way to give him just a first and, and something small. And then now I've got commit and DK going into the playoffs. So, you know, if something happens to Mostert and now I don't have my my third, my last spot to fill him with uh, Christian Kirk. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about those two guys. Maybe I don't love DK long term, but that, you know, yeah. Paying half for Komet, maybe, maybe in the long term, obviously you're not DK and Komet are not going to have the same value moving forward. Um, right. You know, that that's that's very clear. But I look at it as if I can pay half the price for this year to put him to put Komet in my third spot. And they're basically scoring the same points. Why wouldn't I do that? You know, right. yeah. it's not as if Komet is, is going to die. He's an older guy or he's just having a, you know, an admiration of a year where, you know, you weren't like. All, he's getting targets. If worst case scenario, Fields stays there, Fields is is targeting him. You right. know, other scenario is Caleb Williams comes in, Komet's tied to a long term deal there at this three three or four years at this point, and yeah. now you have Komet and and um, Caleb Williams, Caleb, you know, tied right. together. So I look at that as like, hey, maybe maybe DK and and Komet are never going to be in the same stratosphere of value moving forward, but and, and maybe you know, DK over his career has scored, you know, in this particular league is somewhere around 225 a year. Um, and Komet's best year was last year. And then this year should pass it and he might eclipse 200. So maybe we're not to- totally off base of where we're going to be finishes, but value wise, yeah, we're going to lose a little bit, but I'm only paying half price for, for Komet and getting around the same production. So I guess my, my point is, is instead of go, you know, before you go all in on, on one guy and look around and look at the points of who's scoring what, yeah. um, and, and, you know, basically I look at it as I just paid half price for the same amount of points that I was going to get from DK this year. Yeah. Moving forward, maybe the value isn't the same, but I don't, I don't think total points over the next few years is going to be very different unless something drastically changes with DK Metcalf. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I think there's a couple of things there, right? Is one, you know, don't, uh, if it's a player that you're not thrilled with, definitely take a step back. You know, if you, if you were in negotiations for Tyree kill or one of those top, you know, top echelon, like he's not a flex player. He's going into the, the wide receiver one spot, right. Type, mm-hmm. type of type of thing. It's a little different, but with like DK and players like that, when you, when you drop down in those tiers, it's a great idea to just kind of like, okay, well, what, what, well, who else is, especially if it's for a playoff push or, you know, or a hunt or whatever going in, I'm assuming this is on sleeper going into sleeper, hitting that um, stats and season and then going into the flex spot, just kind of seeing who's around that. Like yeah. who's in the ballpark. Is there any like super values that I can get and, you know, and, and, and still feel comfortable with, because to be honest, Cole Cabet is uh, he's playing pretty high. And I know that he's not in that, tight end ranking wise um you know he's not he's not uh kelsey or or andrews or anything like that but you 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 laid it out perfectly he's he's got a long-term contract he's either got justin fields who's targeting him now or he's got caleb williams who or or a rookie quarterback who you know they tend to 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 look towards the tight end anyways and um and his value is uh is is on the up i mean travis kelsey at one point I remember early on because of the way he played, like he wasn't Travis Kelsey that we remember today. Like, yeah. and I think Cole Komet has some skills there where he can in, in say six or eight years be in that conversation of being one of the top tight ends. I, I'm not saying he will get there, but I think he's got 
uh, enough skill of uh, pass catching skills and, and the way that he, he plays. And, and obviously the bears love him, giving him that contract. Like there, there are some upsides there for the long term from a dynasty asset as well. So well played. Yeah. And, and, you know, like what you, so if you go, like I, I have one team left on my fantasy league, which is a tight end premium. So I, I like the way that, that you can kind of display it on there a little better. Um, but, you know, if you go, if you go over to that one and maybe the scoring's a hair different, you know, fractionally for some things on, on the league that I'm talking about, but right. um, if DK Metcalf is wide receiver 19 right now, which is, is, is fine. It's good. It's very good. Um, and I think DK is a really good player, but do I want to pay double for hit for a guy that, you know, I'm having trouble moving in another league yeah. um, because I'm, you know, in a position where I want maybe want to rebuild a little bit or retool um, that, that particular spot. And he, he's averaging 14.9 points per game and um, Cole Komet's averaging 13.6 points per game. Um, right. So, you know, and Metcalf, like I said, in this particular league has 179.4. And Cole Komet has 176.5. So it's basically should be about the same scoring that I was just talking about. We're, we're right there. We're right in the range. So basically I, I traded George Pickens uh, for, um, you know, Cole Komet and, and a three, um, yeah. which, you know, in the long term value wise is George Pickens probably going to go before Cole Komet and a tight end premium startup next year, most likely. And, Maybe. you know, and I like, Pickens again it was not a knock on Pickens like no it was just that you know hey he's he's got 143 points on the year or whatever and it just they kind of either were good or really bad whereas Cole Komet for the most part has been had had two blow up games in there but for the most part it's like I feel like I can count on 13 14 points per game in my last spot and that's what I want right now to try you know the the last two weeks in this league are are total points so the last four teams play a total point round robin essentially for two weeks oh so i just i want to be able to put you know i want the ceiling you know obviously the ceiling is there with dk metcalf but i would have now i'm still going into next year with both of my firsts in in that in that seat in 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 the draft coming next year and i i gained a pick yeah i lost pickens but you know some people are like good see you later other people are like why would you get rid of pickens in that situation and you know that was that's what people are talking about with suboptimal and it's like I, you know i can see either side of that but i i don't think that i'm i'm terribly far off there um and i think cole Komet is is valuable continue to rise i think there was some stink on him mm-hmm. um from last year um a little bit there and, and how that how the Bears offense was functioning. But now he seems to be an integral part of, you know, what they're doing and how they're doing it. And I don't I don't really care if, if they move the whole staff and the quarterback. He's still going to be around. Um, and I think has still proven himself to be a very, very uh, strong asset. So uh, yeah. th- the second part I want to follow that up with <clears throat> is I stopped going after DK Metcalf because I didn't like the price tag. I saw the Cole Komet. I'm chasing that down. So I stopped interacting with the other side of this. And I got I, I got turned off because after I sent that first for him and he sent the Kyron deal back and I said, hey, I'm not trading Kyron. He basically just took Kyron out and sent the same deal back with the first and two twos, which is what you just paid for Waddle uh, or what somebody just paid for Waddle. And I'm like, right. I'm not paying that much right now for DK Metcalf. Right. Um, you know, I, I'd like to do something else. So instead of sending him something back, I just kind of let it go. I dealt with the commit thing. And as I'm doing the commit thing and I'm thinking, well, if I can pull the commit thing off, I'll go back to the DK guy and see if I can, you know, negotiate that deal a little further. Well, you know, once I stopped, sparked up conversations with him, I don't know if he was in a, in a conversation with another guy, but they, they they clearly didn't stop going back and forth. And all of a sudden, I see DK Metcalf get traded, and this is going to be one of those ones that it's not going on YouTube, but if we were on YouTube, people would be like, oh, I want to be in a league with, with you guys. Yeah. It's like he ends up getting traded for Luke Musgrave, Josh Downs, and a fourth. Wow. And I'm like, that's so far off from <laughs> from where we were that I got I got a, not I got turned off in the negotiation of sending anything back. And I yeah. think that's what I want to pivot back to is is don't get, you know, and especially because I know this guy and I know how it, like his deals go that way. It's either mm-hmm. like he wants the most ever and it's so out of line or his right. values so far off. Um, and, and he gets good deals done and he gets bad deals done. I think that was a bad deal. If Luke Musgrave was out there crushing and was tight end three as a rookie and was where Laporta was, Hey, maybe we can, you know, start to have a conversation about that. Yeah. 
But, you know, I got I got a little turned off and focused on this other thing when I should have just been trying to figure out what the combinations of pieces were to apparently get DK for half of what, you know, if, if that's what I knew it was, I, uh, I could have done, you know, yeah, count, countered without the first and say, hey, I'll give you two twos for him right here. You know, right. like, <laughs> you know, and, that's and, basically and, what he did. Like, and just thrown he, in, you know, a Will Levis that's not super flex. So like throw in a Will Levis and a, sure. a Chase McLaughlin and, a, you know, some some guys who are at the, you know, the raw, the bottom of my raw roster who yeah. you know i could throw pull, it you know pull a big co special you know and get the right get 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 an overwhelming offer of of a bunch of uh copper and, and right. silver you know like right so you know that was my second point in that one go shopping look at comparable points don't rule out that there's a tight end and tight end premium out there that could give you comparable points because i think some people say well i got a tight end i don't need to i don't need anything like i have kittle in that league so it's like i didn't need a tight end um but you know that there's in tight end premium man there is there's so much value to be had because i think a lot of people a lot of dynasty analysts out there will poo poo that just because it's only 1.5 and not two and even in two man i'll be like we did that best ball draft Mm -hmm. people just left tight ends hanging out there until like the middle rounds and i scooped up a bunch of them and i got logan thomas and ferguson carrying me to a first place right right now because you know is logan thomas awesome every week no but best ball he's fucking awesome right you know so, well, and I think, I think like, I think the, the key here is, is that you also need to know your league, know your lineup, right? This is very important because you've got three flux in that position, right? Like mm-hmm. if this was a, um, so I did a trade earlier, uh, I think it was earlier this week or, or earlier last week. I mean, where I sent, um, it was just, it's just, just, you know, your normal scoring league. It's not tier based or anything that I, I sent James Cook and Christian Watson for Drake London. But the thing about that one is, is it's a start three wide receiver and I have really low wide receivers. Right. And I, I needed like I was starting like, you know, uh, I, I, I mean, I was starting to scrap heap wide receivers in my third spot. And Watson went down with a hamstring injury. I didn't know how long I'm trying to make the playoffs. And so it's, a, it's the same concept. Like, I, I don't think in that league that you're in, I don't think I would trade James Cook and um in Watson for London, but in the league that I'm in where it's a start three wide receiver, I like personally, I, I have London over Watson in the long run. And I think James Cook is a, is a great asset in, in lots of ways, but I don't know where he's at. And, and so yeah. I felt like ceiling wise, there's a higher ceiling for London, in my opinion, uh, than both of those two players. Plus I think just points wise for the playoffs coming in and, and to help me make the playoffs, I felt like London was going to be, you know, was going to score more points in my wide receiver three spot than obviously James Cook, who's going to score none because I can't put him in there. And <laughs> right. Christian Watson, who's hurt, right? And so right. it's it's like a know your league, know your lineup, know your settings type of type of yeah. scenario. You know, if it's a start three wide receivers, then of course I'm probably not going after Komet as much. I'm probably going after yeah. DK a little heavier, but it, it's not. I don't like the play in those. I like the op- option of three flexes. So I yeah yeah yeah. So, definitely. so there is more tradeability, right? Um, and especially and, if it's pick, Pickens premium. has a different value in a start three wide receiver than Pickens would in a right. start three flex so and yeah. and and just to look over the overall you know landscape of wide receiver versus tight end and tight end premium um you know hawkinson and 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 kelsey who and kelsey by no stretch of the imagination is having a season that people are has been a normal kelsey season would, would you say that i mean at least that's what it seems like feels like it yeah yeah so right now Hawkinson is tight end one in 1.5 premium. Kelsey's tight end two, 239 and 237 on the season. Now, obviously, Tyree Kill, CD Lamb, Keenan Allen, who's been a volume machine, um, and AJ Brown, all all have been uh, tremendous. Like they're right. you know almost unobtainable. Actually, obviously, Keenan Allen, you know, probably obtainable, but outside of those other guys, pretty hard to obtain at this point. And then right. you got Jamar Chase, who yes, I know missed some games and has had you know. Uh, his, his quarterback wasn't great, but by all intents and purposes, is the wide receiver too in a, in a startup right. for the most point. You know, TJ Hawkinson has the same amount of points as he does. Uh, mm-hmm. Travis Kelsey's two points behind him, so there's there's your tight end one and two, basically coming in at wide receiver five and six. Um, right. You know, and then to go down that list a little further, Evan Ingram's at two twelve. He's a he's a wide receiver one. He's right. got he's got more points than Nico Collins, who's your wide receiver twelve right now. Right. Um, you know, so, you know, I mean, and you go down that list, Laporta's got 209. That's a rookie. Um, George Kittle's got 196. And then there's Komet at 176. So uh, that that's all the way into a bunch of your wide receiver twos. Um, right. 
So there is so much value. And and I think the tight end position is slowly uh, turning into, you know, not as big of a hellscape. And but, you know, I've, I've tried to stay at the forefront of it. And that's why I always, always, always draft tight ends at the back end of drafts and tight end premium. Um, right. And, you know, I don't mind taking two uh, a little earlier because, you know, if you did grab Kincaid and uh, let's say obviously Goddard's been hurt. Um but like, let's say you grabbed Kincaid and Goddard or, uh, you know, let's say you grabbed Evan Ingram and, and Cole Komet, you know, in the 10th and 11th rounds in your startup this year. Like <laughs> you're that's a, what you can start both of those guys every week and they're better than, you know, half the top 24 receivers. Right. Uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, just just one more piece of, you know, I, well, I, I think so. Here's another one. Right. I, I'm in that in a two point tight end. And I said early on, I, I sent uh Najoku for love. I mean, I sent uh, love for Najoku, right? Or early on, right? Or, and I, and obviously, I'm not a love fan. And everybody was like, "What in the flip are you doing?" Right? Like, because um, he was going to be a starter. We didn't know where he was at. He he turned out to be a little bit better than than what I I projected. But I just looked up while you were talking. Um, you know, okay, so so where is love at 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 this moment? He's at 276 as far as points go. Najoku's at 260 in this league, so he's 16 points right. behind That's love. Two points per two, reception, correct? Two points per reception, right. exactly. Like and so, like yeah, I think I think tight end premium, especially when you get into the higher, but even not in the higher, as as your point was, was like there's a lot of value there for those mid tier, quote unquote mid tier. I think there's a, a flux of. Um, there's a flux of talent coming into the tight end position where, you know, um, where we haven't, we haven't necessarily had that for a while. We've had a couple big pieces, Kyle Pitts, you know, that kind of thing, you know, mm-hmm. big, big sparks, if you will. But there's some really d- decent, like mid tier dudes that are, that are performing yeah. at a, at a, at a great clip right now. So yeah, Schultz, Schultz came on there halfway through and was crushing and then has missed some games. And I think he'll crush cause they're, you're going to be missing some pieces. So they're, they're just, they're just all out. And Joku has been really, really, really good. And then comes in with Flacco and, and crushes uh, two TDs this week. So I just, you know, don't, don't, don't just poo poo on the, on the tight end spot because, you know, yeah. some people say that it's, you know, it's useless and trade for him later. And it's like, you're not trading for him later in, in, in a lot of leagues. Um, you know, cause it's just maybe, maybe at this point when somebody's trying to make the playoffs and is, you know, maybe you can get somebody from Colcom, but I also have a good relationship with the manager, you know, that I was able to, to, to do that with. Um, right. so, you know, and again, going back to the, the DK part of it, it's like, that's why, when somebody sends you a silly offer, just keep, keep reframing it into, into different parts and pieces. And it's like, you know, if they get mad and say, Hey, I'm just not doing anything, just, you know, then, then, okay, we can stop. Uh, But you know, if I wouldn't have stopped, I don't know if I wouldn't, if I would have just kept building different offers and sending them to him, who knows what he would have accepted. And I I get it, man, that like for the YouTube crowd, which again, this isn't going to be on there, but for the patrons, um, you know, that's, I wish I could get one of those leagues. It's like, well, look what he was sending me beforehand. It's not like, you know, he was sending me, you know, a, a pretty high yeah. thing. And it just so happened that like, what, what, what were you doing there? And everybody has different values. So maybe he just hates DK. Well, you know? And that's the only thing know, I'll but... say about this dude is like, you know, good on him for having his own values. You know, people may not, you know, may, people may poo poo or not want to play in a league with this dude or, or want to play in a league with it's this a $150 dude. It's a $150 yeah. league, man. It's yeah. Not, yeah. You know, it's it's not like, just... People have to have different values. Otherwise you don't really have a value tree, you know, like, right. like, I mean, that's, I think that's part of it is like you, you know, it, it doesn't sound like he's going to win on those trades, but fuck, who knows, man? I mean, Musgrave and, and Downs, I mean, who knows? Like, you right. know, we can look back at this trade two years from now and be like, this dude killed it. Like, his value is right. crazy, you know? like Yeah, and maybe so, if you would have gotten the, the two twos to go along with that, sure, or a two yeah, yeah, and yeah. a three, it wouldn't, it would, you wouldn't, it'd be like, yeah, I don't really like that, but it could, the fourth is like, that's like almost insulting. And, the, yeah. and, the, and the, which again, <laughs> yeah. not, I'm, I'm always the guy who's trying to get those threes and fours yeah. thrones in those yeah. deals but that not, i need a little bit more value uh in that deal like if, if again if it would have been you know a two this year and a two next year and musgrave and downs then it would have been like okay we're or, or a two and a three next year and musgrave and downs it's like okay i think yeah. downs is on the up and musgrave i think can be good we just really you know have yeah right so i mean to me it sounds like you did the foreplay for this owner that came in and, <laughs> yeah. and finished the, uh, you know, got to the mountaintop. So I told him it was too expensive. And then I left him alone instead of, you know, instead of trying to, um, 
you know, finish the job there. So, yeah. and, and I got basically just got discouraged because I was like, man, I, I, we're running out of time. We, I got an hour before kickoff and right. this, and then, then we can't trade anymore. Right. Um, so, you know, I was it, trying to get things done and it just, I wish I wouldn't have stopped and I wish I could have acquired both guys for, um, you know, just trying to find, and maybe, maybe I didn't have the right pieces, you know, may, maybe sometimes that's all, you know, yeah. he value, maybe he has damn near a first round grade on, Musgrave so right. to him Musgrave's a first and Downs yeah. is a two and then he got a four so he got a one a two and a four yeah you know to, to him Cole Komet and Musgrave and DK are the same tier who knows yeah right there's, there's all kinds of pieces there so right 